I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of King Ludwig's castles. This is part 4. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos. The links are in the description. I recommend watching them all to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the previous episode, we explored Neuschwanstein Castle's history and questioned the traditional narrative. According to Wikipedia, King Ludwig II of Bavaria, seeking refuge from the stresses of Munich, built Neuschwanstein as a tribute to composer Richard Wagner. The king funded this project with personal wealth and extensive loans, intending it as a private retreat, though it opened to the public in 1886 after his death. The castle's location, across from Hohenschwangau, now also known as Alt Hohenschwangau, raises interesting questions. An old 1619 map marks both Neuschwanstein, labeled New Hohenschwangau, and Hohenschwangau, suggesting that what we call Neuschwanstein may have been there for much longer than we think. Then there's the mystery around construction. Wikipedia says construction began in 1869, supposedly on the site of demolished medieval ruins, with the foundation laid in 1869 and topped out by 1880. Official records assert that the site was leveled before building began, but some evidence challenges this. No photos exist of any previous castle ruins despite photography being widespread in Germany since the early 1800s. One old illustration allegedly depicts the ruins, yet it dates from 1894, decades after Neuschwanstein's construction. Adding to the intrigue, a friend provided what he claimed was a construction photo. This image reveals only scaffolding on the mountain, no sign of a new build. Instead, it seems the site may have been excavated rather than constructed from scratch, as the mountain appears slightly lower in later photos, like it was dug up. Another midway photo even shows sections still partially buried, hinting that Neuschwanstein might have been uncovered, not erected. With questions lingering, especially around construction photos and site records, the episode leaves us with an open-ended mystery. Is Neuschwanstein truly a new castle? Or has it simply been rediscovered? Anyway, we find out more about Neuschwanstein by looking at the castle across from it, Hohenschwangau. Wikipedia says, Hohenschwangau Castle is a 19th century palace in southern Germany. It was built by King Maximilian II of Bavaria and was the childhood residence of his son, King Ludwig II of Bavaria. Imagine that. Yet another residence for Ludwig. Because the purpose of these castles strewn all over southern Germany is merely to please the whims of the young king, they say. The Fortress Schwangau literally translated the Swan District, which was first mentioned in historical records dating from the 12th century, stood high up on a rock on the side of the present 19th century Neuschwanstein Castle. Interesting. Where are photos, paintings, or drawings of it? If there are none, and there seem to be none, then Neuschwanstein was already there in the 1100s. The present-day Hohenschwangau Castle, or Upper Schwangau, was first mentioned in 1397, though under the name of Schwanstein. Only in the 19th century the names of the two castles have switched. It was built on a hill above Lake Alpsi, below the older fortress. The castle was called Schwanstein in 1397? Ah, uh -huh. okay. The names of the two castles were switched. That certainly smells of history faking. Why would you switch around the names of buildings? Imagine people switching the name of One World Trade Center and the Empire State Building. Why would anyone do that? In April 1829, he had discovered the historic site during a walking tour and reacted enthusiastically to the beauty of the surrounding area. He acquired the dilapidated building in 1832, then still known as Schwanstein, abandoning his father's wish that he should move into the old castle, Hohe Schloss, in the nearby town of Fussen. In February 1833, the reconstruction of the castle began, continuing until 1837, with additions up to 1855. Yeah, okay. If only pictures of the area existed from before the late 1800s. I searched the word Hohenschwangau, Schwanstein, Schwangau, and many other variations for 1830, 1840, 1850, 1860. The only returns I got were for Hohenschwangau, 1855, and 1854. 
Want to bet this photographer took a couple of wide shots? Distant shots? Shots of the area? I'm sure he did. Photography in 1854 was a difficult undertaking, and such an opportunity surely wouldn't have gone to waste. And do you know that if he had included wide shots and distant shots, we could all see the previous version of Neuschwanstein? I spent an hour going through all the works of the photographer of these two photos, George Friedrich Zeebland, and found none of the wider area. Zeebland was born in 1800 and passed away in 1873. He lived in the area of the castles. In all that time, he never got the chance to photograph the castle from a wider angle or its surroundings, apparently. Imagine photographing Hohenschwangau Castle, but never including the surrounding mountains in your shot. He went to photograph Hohenschwangau in 1854 and again in 1855, both times taking in only the castle itself, but nothing else. This is a view of Hohenschwangau from Neuschwanstein. All the old photos show this angle, not the angle from the other side. Why would you want to photograph from the other side if there's nothing there? Okay, fair point. But there are tens of thousands of photos from those days of random mountains and lakes in the area. Adding to the confusion are old postcards from the late 1800s calling Hohenschwangau Neuschwanstein. And calling Neuschwanstein Hohenschwangau. Okay, to be fair, Hohenschwangau is also a name for the village adjacent to these castles. But I don't see a village here, only the castle. Here's 1700s Hohenschwangau. Because I'm paying attention to detail, I can't help but notice that Hohenschwangau is called exactly that on this 1700s etching. That contradicts the previous claim on Wikipedia that Hohenschwangau used to be called Schwanstein. It's so strange to me that there are plenty of etchings, drawings, and paintings of this castle, but not the other, even though public records assure us there was another where Neuschwanstein today stands. This, to me, is solid proof of someone not wanting you to see what was there. But why? Well, this is the usual operating modus of the history fakers. 1. Excavate an ancient site. 2. Claim it as something you've built. 3. Remove evidence of previous existence. I'm starting to believe it's because deception is like a discipline or art to these people. They enjoy deceiving for the sake of deceiving. If you guys still find this video interesting, I'll make a part 5.